Hello gamers, it's Professor Meg here, and welcome back to my channel. Today I am talking about a game that I'm so excited to show you guys. This is Hero County, and I have a friend with me. Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. and from Twitch, Camp Co-op. Um, so today we are talking about Hero County. This is from Off the Page Games. They made Mind Management, which is off the pages of a comic book, and so is Harrow County. So this was a comic book series that I fell in love with years ago. Um, it's a based in like a New Englandish type town where there are different haints and magic, and there's this girl Emmy, and she was born from this tree that a witch was buried under many years ago, and uh, the townsfolk kind of have a weird feeling about her, and they're not sure what she's up to, and. The people that she starts making friends with seem kind of evil, but the evil people look kind of nice. So it's kind of that trick of there are regular humans to watch out for and there are haints and evil people that are actually on your side. And it's a really, really fun comic, uh, very spooky, kind of gory, uh, and this is the game that was developed around Harrow County. Yeah, it's kind of a dark, I'm only just, I mean, you've said this explanation like four times. I'm kind of only just realizing just how darkly thematic it is to real life. The people you really have to be scared of often look nicest. So, and I think we haven't, we'll get, get into this in a second, but it's the protectors and the family. Yes. And if you hear those two words, the protectors and the family, what would you think are the bad ones? Would you think the family is bad? The family is, looks delightful. They oh, look they're well pretty put bad. Together. Oh, they're pretty bad. They, they, but they're so nice looking. I mean, they're also eh, they're pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The game definitely has that aspect. It has that whole that whole thematic underlyings to it. And this is something where I'm not quite as familiar with the whole thematic behinds of the game. You, like I said, right? You read this way long ago. Yes. Like you saw Hero County, you're like, oh my gosh, I the game. I gotta find this game. And yeah. I was like, Hero County, you have no clue what this is, but this looks fun. And I dove into mechanically, which means we're actually coming at it from very different experiences in terms of uh, mm -hmm. just my interest in the mechanics of the game versus your like love of the lore and the experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, Alex, do you want to give us a brief overview of the game? Brief? How brief do you want me to go? Five chapters, one just general high level? You general high level. General high level. This is an asymmetric game, which you're going to be playing as, like you said already, the protectors versus the family, at least as first. As the game progresses in multiple chapters, you'll unlock other characters, characters that can take the place of protectors of family, or a character that will make it a three-player asymmetric experience. The game starts off as a two-player head-to-head -head and can develop, as you learn it, towards that three-player head-to-head option. Uh, but as far as the game goes itself, it's very tactical, abstract in the underlines of the game, while feeling very thematic in the implementation of the actions you're taking across the course of the game. Every single round, you're going to be taking three actions from a selection of four possible actions. Some of those actions can only be taken once, and then combat can be taken multiple times per round. What you want to be doing is you're going back and forth between the two sides, taking actions, flipping over your mason jars to take certain types of actions that will be trying to drive towards your own objectives. And your objectives in the game vary because you can get points in a variety of ways. Each family, each side, has their own different asymmetric objectives as mm -hmm. far as either rescuing the various townsfolk or knocking down and burning down buildings, or alternatively, just taking down the opposing troops on each side, which is where you have that common goal. And the troops are all hanging. They're all haints. So they're haints fighting haints. Yeah, and you which be using, is very thematic. You're gonna be using this cube tower over here. This gonna be a little cube tower where you dump little uh, cubes. This is my favorite part of uh, the combat hurt. system. So you'll be having different colored cubes. You can use different abilities to add more of your own color cubes. And then when you fight, you drop them into this tree. Which is and yes. only some come out. That is the box. You are looking at the box. You currently just dumped a bunch of cubes into the box. The box is a component. Where some cubes will get stuck, as you can just see, I dropped more of them out. Mm -hmm. But how the cubes get stuck and settle is going to determine who wins combat. Mm -hmm. And so you're going back and forth, taking these actions, trying to pick up various tokens on the board to build out your tableau. So there's elements of tableau building, there's elements of asymmetric player powers. Uh, the game is going to iterate across multiple chapters, slowly adding more rules and other sides and ways to interact. You're going to be adding cards, you're going to be adding bonus tokens, you're going to be adding a degree of escalation to the way combat engages points and all that and so you're going to be learning and developing your strategy in different ways across multiple iterate multiple iterative gameplays as you figure out the best way to tackle and take down your opponent in this asymmetric tactical tableau building abstract strategy game and if you're like that's way too many <laughs> words there are a lot of words here um, so my first time playing Harrow County, I was at Gamma, and I heard it was there, Jay had it, I could not find him, I wasn't able to run into him to play it, so we connected uh, via email, and I got to play online with him. Unfortunately, my only complaint about that is that we played on Tabletop Simulator, and he had this, he was dropping the cubes for everyone, and if you guys know me, I wanted to be the one dropping the cubes, so the next time that we played was together at, at, at Gen Con. Gen Con, Gen Con, Gen Con. Yeah. Um, 
and that was the first time I got to actually use the tree and oh my gosh I loved it when I saw Jay doing it I was like that's really fun and interesting and actually getting to do it in person was really fun that's a random happen happenstance note about the nature of tabletop simulator about how you can roll dice in tabletop simulator but like things like yeah. cube towers the the like I've seen a game that tries using it it's very messed up in the way the the physics work with the cube mm -hmm. towers so that makes sense I didn't actually realize that part yeah but yeah, yeah. Uh, so how was your first time we played with um, it? I got to see it at Gamma. I actually got to sit down with Jay at Gamma. I did not oh, play it. Oh, I didn't know that. I know. I just, I just realized I never had I'm the conversation. Jealous. I didn't get to play it at Gamma. I didn't get to play it. He sat down. He showed me the prototype. He kind of walked mm -hmm. me through some aspects. But we didn't actually play the game. So I got a high-level overview of, hey, highly asymmetric, tactical, abstract, two-player game. Mm -hmm. uh, from there, the next time we talked about it was you and I were talking about the game, how we were both covering the game. And we actually, I played it for the first time at Gen Con with you. Uh, and then that was, you had already played it by then. Yes. And I played at Gen Con. We started going through the experience. And then we continued going through the chapters mm -hmm. separately after Gen Con. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll say, so the first time I played, I did very well. Uh, I beat Jay. Sorry. Um, and I, I got a ton of points. I, I completed my objective where I got all of my townsfolk back to home. But the second time we played... The second time we played, well, technically we tied, but I well, just... Well, not second time. Yes. Second time I played. Second time you played, first time I played. We went through the experience. Uh, you kept your side, the protectors. I dove in as the family. Uh, we went through that experience and trying to figure out how to, again, achieve our objectives. And that experience was very much a race towards our own separate, separate objectives without heavily trying to get in each other's way. We just tried pursuing our own strategies, pursuing different ways of trying to, like, you're trying to do you your thing. You were attacking me a lot. Are I was you? not, no, no. I burned down the houses. I attacked you a little bit. Mm. I edged you were attacking more than I was. Yes, then. 100%. I edged out a few points on attacking. Mm. That's how I, I escalated. We both got to the required seven points at the end of the game, but in the same round, I got, I believe, to eight. You got to seven, and that's where the attacking got a few extra points. The game, each round, is to seven points, and you get two points for achieving each of your own private objectives of knocking down the buildings or rescuing townsfolk, and then you get one point for each combat, at least until the game starts scaling up, at which point combat starts dropping off. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we, we dove into that. We had a back and forth, managed to both get our objectives, but I managed to edge you up by a point, which means I won the round. Mm -hmm. And that was my first experience diving into this. Not a lot of blocking, not a lot of trying to get each other's way, mm -hmm. but really diving, really just trying to achieve our own strategies. The next time we dove into it in Chapter 2 it is where we started to experiment a bit more with trying to get each other's way. This is where you went heavily in the combat. Yes. You were like, I'm just I gonna... learned my lesson, and yeah. I learned where the points were. And so I'm sitting there in that game trying to outmaneuver you on... Trying to, like, I, I walked into the second game with a different degree of the way I wanted to interact with the experience. I wanted to get into your way. I wanted to stop you. I wanted to, like, just figure out how to block you. And so I focused very heavily in trying to kill key hints in your pathways that you're trying to connect to the townsfolk. The problem is you weren't connecting these pathways, you were just killing me back. Yeah. And so then yeah. the game escalated. It was actually a very solid game in the sense that the game escalated nicely in the fact that I was trying to tactically plan for how the last game went, and you were trying to just kill me because mm -hmm. that's how the last game went, and you were out-escalating me, and then finally I'm managing to slowly grow my power and start taking you down, at which point I realized you just put down a haint and took two points of the final townsfolk by actually... I Again, I pivoted my strategy to adjust yours, at the same time that you're like, actually, I'm actually getting my final two points this way. Yes. And you're actually sneaking the win that way. So, like, the game will escalate and iterate around the players who are playing the game, especially based on the tactics they're playing. It has that aspect of the game grows with the players. It grows with your experiences in a very solid foundational way. And there is a King of the Hill mechanic where you also get points if you're in a particular spot at the end of each round. Yeah. Um, and I think that mixed with being an aggressive mm -hmm. uh, stance and like trying to wipe you out and keep that spot for myself yeah. really helped a lot. Oh, you destroyed me. And like I'm sitting yeah. there trying to like kill your King of the Hill to stop you getting points and you're like, yeah. actually, I'm going to spawn two more people here. Yeah. So it doesn't <laughs> really matter what you do. But yeah, it, it has that, it has that that tug of war aspect and because again if you play with the same players that tug of war extends game across game as you learn each other's strategies which i always mm -hmm. enjoy when a game can grow with the players in that sense mm -hmm. so we had our initial play together at gen con but then after that i visited alex and we played through multiple chapters yep. and one of the things that i loved the most was chapter two or three adds cards three three, uh, chapter two, three. No, two two adds cards chapter two, adds two. Cards. Um, chapter 2 adds cards. Now, we only ever played as our particular side. So, yeah. I only played as the protectors. Alex has only played as the family. And neither of us has played as Cammy or Hester. Correct. Uh, Cammy? Cammy. Yes, yeah. Cammy. Um, and so there are these different tactics cards that I was able to play. This is what I was looking for. I had a lot of fun playing the game. As soon as this was added, it was everything I needed. Yeah, I really enjoyed that aspect. And again, this goes back to the, the different aspect of the way the 
the, the, the sides play out. Your, your your cards are more like kind of situational abilities that give you that mm -hmm. extra degree of push. Mm -hmm. My car is more lean into the bag building aspect of the family. Yeah. And so it's like, oh, you want to pull fun tokens out of the bag? How about we give you this double attack token or this double move token because that's going to help you or some extra abilities on the tokens. Mm -hmm. And so they do add that extra element to the game and that's going to continue across the chapters of anything from variable setup to changing the way the combat plays out to the bonus tokens you take as you take each action. Like I said already, the game grows mm -hmm. with you both in terms of adding mechanics as well as in terms of the back and forth nature of just learning each other's play styles. There are four different actions you can take uh, on your turn and they're all in these little mason jars and every time you do it you're going to flip it over so that way that can't be an action that you use the next turn. Um, and with that, my favorite thing was paying into the wild tokens. Yes. Immediately from the get-go. The wild tokens, they'll keep building, so you gain one, and then you can do any one act or particular actions, but then the next time you use it, you gain a second token, and then you can do two. And then you use it again, and you have three, and now you can do three wild actions, and you can spread them out that you can use, you know, one to gain battle points, one to spawn someone, yep. one to move, that I loved paying into the wild tokens. So that's a good example of the way you can actually adjust multiple strategies in the game, because that my very first experience in the game, I was paying the wild tokens because they keep escalating so yeah. each if you use wild you kind of want to use them all the time and i was like well that's fun i like that but specifically the second game i was like i want to see what happens if you don't lean into the wilds mm -hmm. and i don't know if you noticed this but in my second game i don't think i touched the wilds yeah. once yeah i was judging you for it I, oh, <laughs> I, I did lose so take that into account but like i i lost that i think because i got outplayed i don't think it's because the wild tokens because the wild tokens actually start off a little weaker mm -hmm. and if you focus your energy on other areas you have the opportunity to grow other things at the same time everything's growing and so the wild tokens are more of a direct growth with flexibility but other opportunities will let you kill people will let you still grow your token bag and so i i enjoy trying other strategies and completely avoid avoiding the wilds as far as how I'm going to build or, or engage. Again, granted, I lost that game, so take it as a grain of salt, <laughs> but I like the fact that you can pursue different strategies, different strategies in the game experience. Um, so the other thing I would just love to mention is that each side has these hates. So you have your main person, uh, but then you also have these hate token or uh, minis, and they're the things that you're dropping around on the board, and they just look so great that for Harrow County and for what they are, they're absolutely perfect, especially the protector ones. I love this. And before we go, I'm just going to explain. For Hester, she adds a third player where she starts infecting people and whispering spooky things into their minds. And there are these little snakes, which is so thematic for Hester. Um, and they crawl into the ears of the haints. So she can infect these haints with her little whispers. And you don't even realize when you're looking at these, there's a tiny, tiny little hole in their ears, which you would think it's just like the ear indentation. It's but like the these injection mold or something. They go inside of it, and it's so spooky. It's yeah. spooky. Like, if you see that on one of your hands, I would be terrified. Yeah, I remember the first time we were, we were playing through the game, and, and Jay's showing, the designer of the game, showing how the chapters are iterated and different things will happen. He just pulls out a little snake and just shoves it in the ear. I'm like... I just played an entire game and I had no idea that yeah, was a thing. Yeah. And like we haven't even talked about like there's gonna be also the haints for 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 Cami as well. These purple haints, which are these various yeah. hug-like faces. Yeah. Lots of spook going on, and they all yeah. The production value on this and this is a prototype. Everything you see here is a prototype, uh, but production value is completely off the chart. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely spooky. Um, is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, not nothing specific. This is on Kickstarter. Yeah, Maybe this is on really, Kickstarter yeah. now. Definitely check it out. I will have it linked below. Um, I had a wonderful time playing this. Yeah, one. this is a, sol a solid game. Mm -hmm. Lots going on here. Lots of ways to grow and, and engage with the experience. Uh, yeah, from off the page games. Yeah, it's their second game, and, and they. I think this is two two solid games in a row. I can't wait to beat you at it again. <laughs> All right. Well, I have been Professor Meg. I will have links down below for everything if you want to check this game out. This I'm has Alex been Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And we will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.